I take care of patients with cystic fibrosis, which is a genetic lung disease, and I also study airway inflammation. So when the COVID pandemic began, we all saw that we had the capability of studying COVID in kids. We had the clinical team, we had the basic research team. I felt as though my airway inflammatory research could help us understand COVID. So we really shifted gears. Everybody who was working on cystic fibrosis turned and started working on COVID. So we established a pediatric COVID-19 biorepository, which involves blood samples or nose swabs or throat swabs or stool or urine. Our initial goal was to understand how kids were handling the virus so much better than the adults. So we really worked seven days a week without a weekend for a solid two months to try to collect as many samples and process them. We've enrolled almost 400 patients so far. This is really the most complete and largest fire repository for pediatric COVID in the world. So our findings were that kids have mild symptoms and don't get as sick as adults do but they carry very high viral loads. So their potential for transmitting the virus is higher. And our take home from that is that kids could play a higher role in the pandemic than we originally thought. Based on our findings and on other findings, the American Academy of Pediatrics has shifted its recommendation and now recommends children's ages two and older to wear a mask. We also have received funding to lead a multi-center trial to detect the late inflammatory response to COVID that can occur in kids called multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. I wanna understand why kids better contain the virus with their immune responses as compared to adults. That could help inform us how to safely vaccinate kids and what sort of side effects we should watch for. Since it happened so quickly, this has all been unfunded research. We need to be leading these efforts, and I think we have been, and we need to continue to do so.